particular for kind of invitation to this uh, conference. Uh, actually, uh, sorry for being too late. Uh, my, to my topic today, I think about uh, how we can deal with gingival overgrowth or oral lesions in pediatric population. Uh, my name is Islam, I'm from uh, Egypt, from Alexandria, uh, one of the ancient cities in the world. And I have been trained in Glasgow, in UK. There are no sun at all. I'm from Egypt, there are too much sun. This is my country, I'm from Alexandria. This is Alexandria Publica. It's contained one of the ancient uh, medical schools in the world. And I think we all know this person. He worked at this place. This is Hippocrates. All when you graduate from our medical school, we told Rima Mushri, it's me first, do no harm. This is the aim of our medical study and our medical service to the patient. We are clear about patient safety. Patient safety is mean first do no harm. We have to select patient right diagnosis and right treatment plan to get proper treatment to our patients. I present this before uh, in Tunisia in the Congress of Oral Maximilian Surgeon. Uh, this is the aim of my talk. How we can help this child? Before six years, this child came to my office. He's three years old. He's autistic. He takes a phenylzine, phenylzine, and her parents, his parents complain of no teeth at all, plus obstructive sleep apnea. So, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to speak about drug induced gingival enlargement in pediatric populations and how we can treat it, and then focus on later. Finally, I will present seven cases. This is drug induced gingival enlargement. Drug induced gingival enlargement, a lot of drugs can make gingival enlargement in adolescents and in pediatric populations. Gingival enlargement is very bad for the children, it can cause them bleeding on eating and even it can cause obstructive sleep apnea. So then large fibrous tissues. It can be congenital or drug induced. Drug induced today I'm going to present in this series I present anti uh, from anticonvulsants and from immunosuppressants and from calcium channel blockers only one case. How we can remove this? At first of my lecture, I'm focused on patient safety. So we can simply take the patient to OR, giving the patient general anesthesia, and using our scalpel to remove this tissue or try another, another techniques. We have several techniques. We can use diastole, we can use sublations, we can use cryo, we can use radio frequency. All this, before I jump to any technique, I have to see the effect of healing, the effect of Pain, the effect of edema, both aortic edema, especially if you treat the posterior area, and intraortic bleeding, and finally, very important for us, for me, I'm dentally qualified, the effect on tooth structure. I don't like to remove the gum, and everything will be okay, and end with death of the teeth, and the child extracts his own teeth after all. Laser, it's mean, I think we all know this, it's light amplification stimulated emission of radiation. Actually, it's a light. It's like this laser pointer, I use it. But the difference, actually, I don't, <laughs> I don't like to use a laser as a hot knife. I use the property of lasers. Laser can be scattered like this rollovers, or it can be absorbed and reflected. We have to study the interaction between the laser and tissue. At first, start by warm up, then penetration to proteins, and desiccation, and finally carbonization and vaporization or removal of the lesion itself. This exactly happens by laser. Laser can be reflected or can dispersed and it can transfer to the tissue. This is a chromophore. What we mean by chromophore? Chromophore is important material, it's absorbed by laser. So each laser has a chromophore. For example, we can use carbon dioxide, which is referred to each 
to the star area, as we can use it with micro manipulators. Also, we can use a diode, which encroaching a very a high hemostatic efficacy, as it's chromophore, it's hemoglobin. And also, we can use in some cases to make it retraction to the tissues, erbium, yeah. This is carbon dioxide. How can I use laser inside the patient pump? Maybe we have three techniques. We can use it in incision, excision. It's, I can use it like a scalpel or like a blade. And I can use it in vaporization or ablation. I use it like a vein to rinse it. And finally, I can use it for homeostasis. The good thing is laser, it's very, very thin. Like this laser pointer I use it. I can just remove it and keep the piece intact. So I can remove it indeed, don't injure other structures. In vaporizations, I can remove it, keeping the charred pool, what's what called it biological dressing. So we can remove the surface lesions and we keep it carbonizations or black lesions, what we call it biological dressing. This is ablation. For me, when I like to remove it after making vaporization, I give the child a tube of KY and ask the child to soothe his mouth regularly to avoid pain. Hemostatic, hemostatic. Hemostatic, we can change by focusing and defocusing mode to get it more. This is my clinical cases. I start with anticonvulsants, it's like chromatoids and sodium phalloprates. All this can result to a calcium channel, result to gingival alarm. This is our patient, the first one. Okay, now this patient came to my office. See, it's hello. So I asked this patient to do special X-ray. We have it in our dental office. It's called community scan. It's different from CT scan because it's very fast. No need to to give the child general anesthesia. You can get this X-ray. From this X-ray, I realize the child has this, and there are no posterior obstruction. Using the computer, I can make slicing and no posterior obstruction. So the problem, I just remove this fibrotic tissue, and everything will be okay. So if I remove this, taking the child to the OR and remove this large, huge tissues, it can be clear again. Yes, totally agree with you. How we can prevent this? We can prevent this by two things. Number one, meticulous oral hygiene by brushing and everything, brushing and mouth wash, and also by giving the child a folic acid. There are uh, research on giving the, giving folic acid. It can decrease the drug induced gingival enlargement, but without any evidence. But I think folic acid, it's uh, just a nutrition supplement. It's not, the, the patient can get it out of the counter. No need. This is how we can remove it. We can do this in 15 minutes in the child. This is before and after. This video show it. If you have time, you can show it after we finish it. This is another case of drug use. See, it's very huge. We can use this later and we get this biological dressing. This is biological dressing. And this is after it's healed. Another case of cracking use also. We remove it, keeping the piece as okay. And after this, we get exposed of roots. So a lot of provide to get less sensitivity. This is my fourth case. How can I remove it? Keeping this. This is my city. <laughs> Immunosuppressant, it's cyclosporins. Uh, like cyclosporins, it's given for a child for leukemias. Example, like these lesions. Actually, these lesions, it's <coughs> drug induced, and when I remove, it repair again. I, the, this child is under, undergoing removal using blade. And after this, I decide to remove it again using laser. Why? If I use laser, I can penetrate inside the abdominal ligament without extracting the piece for the child. This, these lesions. And this is biological dressing. 
this case, it's drug infused from the lingual side. The drug infused is this lesion, it's push the teeth. So after I remove it with laser and waiting for one month, the teeth can, after the pressure subsides, the teeth can come to the its normal place. Finally, it's calcium channel blockers, it's like MTDB. It's really to prescribe for children, like this case. We can remove it also using laser, same. Thank you for your time. I wish I'm not so boring and uh, I'm not so teacher. Thank you.